Hello, and welcome to today's daily study. Thank you so much for joining me. Today, we're going to be revisiting a little bit of some of the stuff that we talked about on the Sabbath day on, on Sunday. So, it, and the only reason for that is because out of these two chapters, much of the content has been covered. Not all of it. I'm still going to um, be going through <laughs> a lot of other stuff. But there are some things that are worth repeating since we do have a little bit more time to delve in deeper into the topics. So today we're going to be talking about Jesus' visit to Bethany, in which he was with uh, Mary and Martha. And it says, Now it came to pass as they went, so as they were going about, that he entered into a certain village, and a certain woman named Martha received him into her house. So there was a woman named Martha who received him. Uh, in other words, she invited him into her home. Now, it's obvious from what's following that there was some form of familiarity here. And in fact, uh, we're going to go over a little bit of James E. Talmadge, Jesus the Christ, about this particular interaction in which he talks precisely about that. As she had a sister called Mary, which also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. So, and uh, she had a sister, name was Mary, and she was sitting there instead of going about the household chores. She was sitting with Jesus and hearing the things which he had to teach. But Martha was cumbered about much serving. In other words, she was pretty stressed out about all the things that she was doing to be a good hostess, to provide for or to provide for her guest, and came to him and said, "Lord, dost thou not care that my sister hath left me to serve alone?" So this is kind of something that you'd hear more in a familiar relationship. So as he's coming to Jesus and's like, uh, "Do you not worry about the fact that my sister's left me alone?" Like she's, it seems more tongue in cheek than anything. But she's talking to Jesus at, more at Mary. And again, that's covered in the Jesus of Christ we're going to go over. So bid her, therefore, that she help me. So in other words, please tell her to help me out. And Jesus answered and said unto her, Martha, Martha, thou art careful and troubled about many things. In other words, you're a good hostess. You're, you make sure that everyone's needs are attended to and that they're all happy. But one thing is needful, and Mary hath chosen that good part. So he's saying that there is something more important than worrying about all of these household duties right now, now that I'm here. And Mary has chosen to listen well to the things that I've, I've, been, I've been teaching, which shall not be taken away from her. In other words, these household chores are not always going to be there. The house isn't always going to be messy. There's not always going to be guests to entertain. To entertain When we all pass away, then all of that stuff is done away with. Once the Christ comes again, after the millennium, once we receive our perfect and immortal bodies, these household chores, these things are going to be done away with. We have no further need of them. But we will always need the atonement of Christ. We will always need the teachings of Christ. And so here he's saying that this part, the part where she's listening to me and learning from me, that is never going to be taken away. That's something that she will always be able to use. And I like James E. Talmadge in his review of this particular incident. And he says, <clears throat> On one of his visits to Bethany, a small town about two miles from Jerusalem, Jesus was received at the home where dwelt two sisters, Martha and Mary. Martha was housekeeper, and therefore she assumed responsibility for the proper treatment of the distinguished guest. While she busied herself with preparations and was cumbered about much serving, well intended for the comfort and entertainment of Jesus, Mary sat at the master's feet listening with reverent attention to his words. Martha grew fretful in her bustling anxiety and came in, saying, Lord, dost thou not care that my sister hath left me to serve alone? Bid her, therefore, that she help me. 
She was talking to Jesus, but really at Mary. For the moment, she had lost her calmness in undue worry over incidental details. It is reasonable to infer that Jesus was on terms of familiarity with the household, else the good woman would scarcely have appealed to him in a little matter of domestic concern. In other words, she wouldn't have worried about bothering Jesus, who was already famous throughout Jerusalem, with something so small as getting her sister to help. He replied to her complaining words with marked tenderness. Martha, Martha, thou art careful and troubled about many things, but one thing is needful, and Mary hath chosen that good part, which shall not be taken away from her. There was no reproof on Martha's desire to provide well, nor any sanction of possible neglect on Mary's part. We must suppose that Mary had been a willing helper before the master's arrival. But now he had come. She had chose to remain with him. Had she been culpably neglectful in her duty, Jesus would not have commended her course. He desired not well-served meals and material comforts only, but the company of the sisters, and above all, their receptive attention to what he had to say. He had more to give them than they could possibly provide for him. In other words, his teachings were more important than these household duties and entertainments. Uh, Jesus loved the two sisters and their brother as well. Lazarus was their brother. Both these women were devoted to Jesus, and each expressed herself in her own way. Martha was of a practical turn, concerned in material service. She was by nature hospitable and self-denying. Mary, contemplative and more spiritually inclined, showed her devotion through the service of companionship and appreciation. By inattention to household duties, the little touches that make or mar the family peace— Many women has reduced her home to a comfortless house. And of course, this as well goes towards men as well. Men can sit there and get caught up on the tiny details and, and mar the spirit of their home. But here we're talking more specifically about these women and the effect of women in general in the household. So uh, here she sa he's saying that uh, because... So, so many women are focused on the minor details of household chores and duties that sometimes they make the household less spiritual. And many another has eliminated the essential elements of home by her self-assumed and persistent drudgery. In other words, by the tasks that she herself takes on. In which she denies to her dear ones the cheer of her loving companionship. There is a time for labor inside the home, as in the open, and every family time should be found for cultivating that better part, that one thing needful, true spiritual development. So in other words, what he's saying here is that when you are with your family, there is a time and place, of course, for the drudgery of taking care of the house, of sweeping the floors, of washing the dishes, of making the meals, of doing all this stuff. But the most important thing is cultivating that better part, the spiritual side of things. We need more of the spirit in our homes, more so than whether our homes are clean or not. Now, that's not to say that the cleanliness of the home needs to be neglected. Christ himself taught this when he said, Wash the inside of the vessel first before washing the outside. He didn't say ignore the cleanliness of the vessel. He said make sure that the first priority is taken care of first. And then take care of the lesser priority, which is the outer vessel. The, the things that we see, the, the cleanliness of the household. Whether or not the floor is swept and mopped whether or not the, the dishes are clean, the lights are all working, whether or not things are fixed or broken or the laundry is all about or not. The first and most important thing that we cultivate every single day is the spirit in our home. If we're sitting there worried more about the laundry on the floor and destroying the spirit in our home, 
not only is that laundry problem not going to be very well solved, laundry's always going to be there, but we've also destroyed the ability for the Spirit to bring calmness to us, to help us with those problems, to help us really receive spiritual revelation. One of the things that I like to do is I take on mostly the washing of the dishes in my household. Now, of course, I'm not very good at it. I forget to wash dishes more often than not. And when I do wash them, sometimes they don't come out perfectly clean. Sometimes they're not put into the dishwasher perfectly well prepared for the dishwasher. And there are two things that can happen there. One, we can sit there and we can fight about the dishes. We can completely destroy the spirit, have no inkling of the Holy Ghost at all, and fight about the dishes. Or we can sit there and work towards a better solution. If the dishes aren't clean, we wash them again. If they go into the dishwasher and come out dirty, you wash them again, you put them back into the dishwasher again. There is no emergency. There's never going to be an end of dishes that need to be washed. The laundry is never going to stop needing to be put into the washer or dryer. There is never going to be an end of the household drudgery while we are here on this earth, while we don't have perfect and uh, incorruptible bodies, while our minds are still subject to the whims and waves of whatever affects our mentality, whether it be sickness or whether it be some other form of mental degradation. We sit there and we worry so much about these things that we're never going to be ever truly rid of until Christ comes again. And so what is the more needful part? Is the more needful part to sit there and get into a huge argument over the laundry and the dishes, to sit there and feel ill-used because you have these problems that need to be resolved? Or is it to cultivate the spirit, to work with being happy with our families, to cultivate that better part, that those better feelings? When you enter into your home, does it feel like a good place to be? Or does it feel like you wake up every day worried about what the next argument's going to be, what the next problem's going to be, whether you're going to do good enough or bad enough, whether or not the Spirit's going to be there or not. What are you cultivating in that particular environment? Again, laundry, you're going to wear your clothes during the day. Those clothes are going to get dirty. They need to go into the washer. Whether or not they're on the floor or in a hamper, they still have to go through the washer. Everything goes through that same bottleneck. So, when you're doing this, I invite you to think about, during your daily drudgery, what it is that you are cultivating during that drudgery. Are you cultivating a spirit that will help in the long term to help with these trials? When the spirit is there, are people not more willing to help with whatever the drudgery is, with picking up their clothes, when the Spirit is there, do they not feel more inclined to have a clean home? These things are reversed in our minds, where we think we need a clean home to invite the Spirit, but instead we invite the Spirit, and that inspires us to clean our home. And so, my invitation to you is to think about this, to work on inviting the Spirit more than worrying about the less needful things, just like Martha was worried about and Jesus taught her the most important thing you can do is to worry about the more needful and more spiritual things. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope to see you again tomorrow.